Hello, my name is Matthew, and I've been working, I've been working my way through the Norton Anthology of English Literature, and uh, over the past few days I, I've been reading uh, a collection of a few poets, um, I'll read them off for you. George Herbert, Robert Crashaw, Henry Vaughn, and Andrew Marvel, and I, I really couldn't do a video for each one of them. Um, they were all just so unremarkable, um, g generic, expressionless, voice voiceless, um, stuffy and posturing, um, just these poems that were as stiff as wooden boards and just not saying very much. Um, and I, I, I couldn't I couldn't pull anything out of it. I had no enjoyment or appreciation. Um, it's almost disappointing to me that for this period, to make a collection, make an anthology like this, this is the best representation of the time. And something that I had thought of at, at some point um, going through these poets uh, was actually my first experience with reading Wordsworth um, age, years ago. Um, I first encountered Wordsworth in his little book of poetry, uh, Lyrical Ballads, his collaboration with Coleridge. And on the back page, or in the introduction, it described Wordsworth as this um, radical, experimental poet who um, brought a voice to the page that was entirely new at the time. He was uh, direct and conversational. He used uh, real, everyday language. Um, and at the time that I read that, I, I didn't ap appreciate or really understand um, where it was coming from. I, I didn't have enough historical context and um, Wordsworth already sounded old-timey to me so it wasn't anything that I uh, put much consideration into. So reading these four um, brought a whole new light to just how stuffy and boring um, these English poets could be at the time. And um, most of them, I, I can't remember exactly, but most of these four, three out of four, were uh, appointed by the church. These are court-appointed poets. And to me, it just says so much about what comes out on the page because they they do sound like poems that are seeking approval uh, or courting favor. They're, they're writing something um, with the expectation that somebody is going to be nodding their head and saying, yes, this this is a good poem. We, we can print this. I don't really know if any of that's true, but th that, that's the feeling that I get. They're, they're so... Um, vague and the, the there's a lot of religious poetry in here that um, isn't saying very much it, it almost makes me think that <clears throat> someone like John Donne who uh, wrote religious poetry that um, had um, eth ethereal qualities and had a seriousness um, a seriousness in the poetry that felt profound. Um, there, there was feelings of doubt um, and then just feelings of a really strong connection with um, God or your faith or any, anything like that. And I almost just imagine like e either a church or, or these, these poets like trying to replicate that idea. Just a workaday poet writing about how God is great, and things like that, and it just didn't do it for me. Um, the saving grace in all of this would be if there was an, um, an elevated feeling, if, if there was artistry or an inherent beauty that spoke to me, and I, I didn't get any of that. They just, they, I mean, it's just a collection of these dairy horses, uh, dairy cows. Um, and to give you an idea, uh, 
this is by Richard Crashaw, and I, I, I just think this is grotesque. Um, the, the kind of thing that I, I don't believe anyone writes with real sincerity. Um, and I don't know the, the context or how this relates to his real life, but uh, all I care about are the words on the page. So this is about babies that have died. The title is To Infant Martyrs. Go, smiling souls, your new built cages break, and heaven you'll learn to sing, ear here to speak. Nor let the milky fonts that bathe your thirst be your delay. The place that calls you hence is, at worst, milk all the way. So, a lot of really vague language. Um, there's nothing personal or real human connection. Instead, it's just a little bit of propaganda saying, well, babies go to heaven. They're gonna have, they're gonna have milk for eternity. Uh, and he wrote uh, at least another one that they put in here. There's one called Upon the Infant Martyrs. And it's just gr gross to me. And there, there's a lot of these in here that just feel like um, bu bullet point checklist. This this is um, th these are viewpoints. These are ideas that need to be conveyed. Like um, you know, th there's God in nature, and babies go to heaven, and um, which is all well and good. Uh, actually, um, Wordsworth has a poem called um, "We Are Seven, I believe. Um, and we just read Ben Johnson uh, had two poems, um, one a poem about how he buried his son, and another one about how he buried his daughter, and they're emotionally affecting. There, there's a human quality in them. You feel like there was an emotional charge that um, g g generated um, the, the poem. These are just like copywriters. These are Scrivener poets. Um, I guess I'll say Andrew Marvel might have been the best of the bunch. Uh, I'm actually, I'm just, I'm just glad to get through these characters. Um, and after this, we have John Milton. So it'll be nice to read about the devil for a little bit. Um, Oh, oh, in there, I really don't have much to say. Just four un unremarkable poets. Um, leave a comment if you'd like. Let me know if you like them or not, or um, if I'm missing something. Um, that's it. Leave a comment if you like. Thank you. Bye.